Hey, streaming. Yep, there it goes. The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man. Oh, the Invisible Man. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on The Invisible Man again. I think we had a couple of little blips, my fault again at the beginning. Um, Google Chrome. Oh, man. Oh, that's one of us, is it? Who, who was that? Was that was on me, was it? It wasn't me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens more often than you would realize, actually. <laughs> so that was the, uh, the voice of Dolly Dunn, who's going to be joining us just in a few seconds. So uh, Dolly Dunn, um, a country great, is an independent musician, um, it's going to be joining us in just a second. Just let everybody know uh, we are live on the, the It's All in the Mind show uh, page. Sorry, It's All in the Mind page on Facebook, the Colorado Phil Show page. Uh, this um, the show is will be available on uh, YouTube um, afterwards. Uh, the Invisible Man .ca slash YouTube is the best way to get there. Um, and lots of information about the show can also be found on the Invisible Man .ca website. So go check that out. Um, for Colorado Phil is going to be joining us in about uh, uh, 10, 10, maybe 20 minutes, um, Randy, and then when he comes in, it's going to be a great um, <laughs> chaos, I'm sure, lots of fun, and we have no idea what is going to happen, but... Um, well, but oh, anything can happen on this show. Let's, let's not... Uh... Let's not count ourselves out here. For sure. uh, just before we go on, we got two uh, two fans that have joined us right off off the the hop here. Uh, Mary R. Gushu, I, I hope I say that. Mary, I'm sorry if I slaughtered your last name. Says hi, Dolly, with a big heart. So a message out to our lovely guest, Dolly, and as always, my number one fan and the lady who has to watch me because she loves me, my wife Jessica. I'm not quite sure if my daughter is awake. But uh, considering we've been talking probably, and I've been talking probably louder than I should, she's probably awake. So, hi, Jess. <laughs> hi, Evelyn. Hi, Jess and Evelyn. Thanks for joining us. And Shalim has just joined us. Oh. Hello, Shalim. All hey, right. Hey, hey we are rocking today. Three whole interactions. <laughs> yep, it'll be thousands. It'll be thousands before the year's over, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so bet. okay. without further ado, uh, let's introduce everyone to Dolly. Here she comes. Hey Dolly, Hi. how are you? Thanks so much for joining us. I am great. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, so pleasure is all ours. Um, so, uh, uh, but before we get going, is there, uh, we may just tell um, the audience a little bit about yourself, uh, what um, you know, what, what you've uh, kind of been up to, what you're about, and yeah, we can start a conversation. I don't like talking about myself, but uh, I have. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> 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 I don't. Well, okay. we can say where 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 are you based now? Where are you from? Have you always been around that area? There's things like that. That's a good place to get started. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> or, <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Thank you very much. Uh, I came down here last August. Believe it or not, I was in Fort McMurray, Alberta, for 32 years, and I moved to New Brunswick last August. And that's it. I've been here ever since. <laughs> Fort Mac, Alberta. Oh, my right. goodness. You've gone from really cold to really hot. That's, yes. Wow. That's a, that's a heck of a heck of a change going across the country there. How do you find the uh, the culture? I guess there's a lot of uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, East, Pe East Coast people going out to the oil field looking for work and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. How do you find the culture changes, uh, especially having um, 
being a country artist, it's very synonymous with playing uh, in Alberta, being ranchers and uh, a lot of agriculture and that kind of stuff is a very country kind of atmosphere, prairie type region to being in uh, New Brunswick, which is probably a little bit more like um, Celtic and more folk kind of music. How do you find that? Do you find you integrating in there pretty well? Uh, it, really, I'm originally from Newfoundland, Canada. So, but I left Newfoundland when I was 21 and moved to Fort McMurray. And uh, the cult, when I moved back here in August, it was the biggest culture shock of my life because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a city girl, right? I, I lived in the city for so long. I came down here and you got all these critters and bugs and humidity and we don't have humidity in Fort Mac. It's like the air is really dry. Uh, as for the music, believe it or not, the music is so much more than it is in Fort McMurray. So much more. Uh, it's more country down here, whereas anywhere else is not. Uh, mm. More gospel. I love my gospel, so it's 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 a lot of gospel down here. I, I just love it. I, I'm learning. I'm settling in. I'm getting used to the groundhog that's now made its way underneath my shed, and I'm getting used to that. Well, there's I, a song in there, right? The groundhog underneath the sh the shed. You can make a yeah, song into that. Groundhog has a whole dog, and he's <laughs> underneath the shed. I haven't seen a dune bug here yet, but they tell me they're really bad. So if I see one. I may skip town. <laughs> so, no, I haven't seen any June bugs. I haven't seen this. I seen one snake that creeped me out. Uh, they say there's lots of, just lots of weird critters down here, and I don't like <laughs> spiders. <laughs> Nobody likes spiders. That's okay. I don't, no, I don't like spiders. But as for the music, the music is amazing down here. The artists are just amazing. I actually signed. Uh, two artists, I think, no, two, no, four artists since I've been down here to my label from down here. So it was pretty good. Well, that sounds like a good segue. Um, tell us about the label. That's, uh, um, that's, that's all, all interesting stuff we have because um, I have um, um, thoughts and you know, pictures in my head of the Beatles and Brian Epstein going to, <laughs> going, you know, <laughs> going to London and a big recording studio. Um, what's it really like? And, uh, um, maybe you can just maybe talk, tell us um, about your label and what's, uh, what, what the real ins and outs really are. Oh, my label. <laughs> it's, uh, Labor of Love is the label. I started it in May of 2017. Uh, I started it with, I think I had three artists and one of them was me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, great choice. By, yeah, I started it in May of 2017 and then I was kind of shocked that in... Uh, May of 2018, it was nominated for Label of the Year in Nashville, so uh, that shocked me. And I just kept signing artists that, that I thought that were great country artists, and they have to be great country artists in order to sign. Uh, they have to be a team player and love what they do. And I do all the promotions. Okay. I do all the promotions for all the artists. Uh, I do all the videos, the graphics. I even produced a few of the songs, um, supplied a lot of the tracks, the back tracks for their songs. Uh, they are amazing. Everyone that's on the label are amazing. I listen to them every day. Oh. I love them. <laughs> um, how many uh, artists do you have? I have no idea. I think it's Ooh. 17 or 18. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, you are a busy that's massive. lady. Uh, extremely busy. Well, Maybe thank you very much ago. for making making time for us today. Oh, That's gosh. actually appreciated. Oh yeah, just just I made time for I always make time for the interviews and or I try to. Uh, but I was looking forward to this, and right after this, I'm going out drinking. <laughs> well, well, it's five yeah. o'clock somewhere, right? And it's not yeah. that far off for you guys. It's, it'll be about. Four by I guess the time you were done with you guys here. Yeah. Actually, it's it, interesting enough. We didn't um, things that nobody's really privy to except for the, the us as we gather before off air. Uh, I got to talking with uh, Dolly really quick and saying that I'm not particularly a country music fan. It's never really 
uh, appealed to me, but um, but she was graciously enough, uh, you know, to to spare this poor metalhead uh, yeah, some some slack here. Uh, your label is it specifically um, country or country folk or that kind of genre? Or are you open to all kinds of acts, or just anyone who can bring the bring the bills in, so to so to speak? It it started off. You had to be country, right? But really, I'm Irish. So uh, I have an Irish artist on my label with me. Um, actually, he's one of my duet partners. <laughs> uh, I have Newfoundland artists signed, which Newfoundland artists are mostly folk, Irish. Sort of a Celtic folk Irish They're feel to them, Celtic. right? Yeah. And uh, I have an Irish album out. I'm working on my second. Um, no, it, I'm not closed off to any genre. I'm not closed off, but no, no rap. <laughs> no, no <laughs> Everyone's got to have a line no. somewhere, right? That's, no, that's, I, I don't understand that's rap. I'm not against it. I just don't understand it. And uh, yeah. but no, I'm not closed off to to outside of country. Yeah, I'm, I I don't care for rap very much, except for that uh, occasional one from occasionally for one that one for Will Smith. Uh, he's he's done a couple of good oh, ones. Oh yeah, but... now he's cool. well. Yeah. Most of his stuff is woo, yeah, ha, yeah. woo. <laughs> Anyone can do that, right? Uh, just a quick shout out. We got Arno Ut Ochen. Sorry if I butchered your name. I will get better at pronouncing names. But welcome Arno to our show. All hey, our welcome, social media friends. Welcome. Um, so are you taking on new artists um, I mean how how much room do you have left on the uh, your your album or your uh, your label I mean sorry well right now where it's just me I, I don't like to take on too many I, I've, I've stopped where I stop right now because it is a lot of work it is a lot of work trying to promote and a lot of all these artists plus then I, I you know i have to promote myself also so because nobody else is <laughs> so uh, i have to promote my music but my artist comes first so whenever they need anything i'm there whenever they want anything i'm there i will stop doing what i'm doing for me and do for them but okay. i've stopped taking on new artists for now Okay, yeah, you'll know you'll, you have to know your limits. Um, overstretch yes. yourself, eh? Um, so even if I'm really charming, we can't <laughs> expect the next uh, "It's All in the Mind" album to be produced by the the lovely and talented Dolly Dunn. I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll definitely talk afterwards. Um, okay, um, sounds good. We've um, yeah. So actually, you you're a, um, a fairly quite a, quite a busy musician yourself um you've got i think i counted eight albums and that doesn't include um work you've done with um duets and with other people um can you yeah how 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 much um live music do you do how much recording do you do for yourself for your own music oh gosh i record every day oh, every okay. day if i get if i get in the mood to to record a song i'll get her done i'll do it that day and just get it done. If a fan requests a certain song that they want me to hear, I will bend over backwards to do it. My fans are what's important to me very much so. And if they request anything, I will try to do it. Okay. And I have done it. Okay. Uh, um, how often do you actually do live performances? And you have, I've seen you've had many videos there. Um. Uh, I used to go live a lot. I used to do live but i don't need more because i just don't find the time i mm. i don't have the time okay that's completely understandable 17 artists ouch yeah okay <laughs> um okay so phil i think has joined us here we go hey phil there he is he's come back so uh um yeah so uh, we were just uh you, you were listening to the show right you were listening to oh you're muted unmute yourself <laughs> 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 yes, I was. There we go. <laughs> uh-huh. There you go. So, do you have any uh, any questions for Dolly? Um... <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Pardon me, but talk amongst yourself. I got to fix this throat thing. First. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Uh, I actually do have a question. One, and it's one of the things that I had noted when I was uh, listening to your to your music, uh, Dolly. Uh, you had mentioned also that you you are a gospel, do a lot of gospel singing. Uh, 
somewhere buried in Mark's notes that he sends uh, to us. He said that you had gotten a start in singing in churches. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I started yeah. singing in the Catholic church back in Boyd's Cove, Newfoundland. Uh, ah, okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't wait to get to the choir. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> wait. It was the highlight of my weekend. Excellent. All right. Uh, so in, and of course, gospel and, and country are, are sort of hand in glove. That's a very, those are very tight knit types of genre. Do you feel that, uh, that faith is, is that more of a tradition for you or does that actually have something that's more meaningful to you in, in there? Or is it just the, the love of, of, uh, of the, of the gospel type tones or, or and no, it, it's, it's the gospel lyrics itself. It's oh, okay. what the lyric says itself. Uh, gospel is just, if I could do all gospel, I would, I would right change on. over to gospel. Okay, I'm ready. I know my question now. <laughs> okay. yeah. You'd be kind to no, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, because we got a, we got a French cat, we got a French Canadian and a new Brun, uh, new, a former Newfoundlander. And talking about Catholic, uh, is maybe it's good that we're all separated by a lot of distance here. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, hey, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of uh, your song, uh, I'm a Survivor. Yeah. And the lyrics really connect with me, especially through all the crap I've been through lately and the past few years, whatever. But uh, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you, like, how much of your song lyrics um, are based on um, your experiences um, or like real life and how much of it is just, uh, it's your creative side. Every one of my songs is based on something that I've been through. Uh, actually they used to call me the older, the older version, Taylor Swift. You oh, they... <laughs> <laughs> Taylor sings about love's gone, love gone wrong and blah, 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 blah. Uh, every one of my songs is based on every aspect of my life. Oh, wow. Wow. That's uh, with me. Lyrics are everything. Yes. Um, that's why I, you, I heard you guys slam hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm slamming hip hop. You, you heard, you heard you other people slamming hip hop. I'm, I'm okay with it. But See, like I said before, Dolly's been gracious about to this metal head about liking other genres. So I, I figured I'd better not weigh in on that. <laughs> See, like for me, my genres uh, that I love personally go from hip hop, uh, country, Western, um, modern country, rock, pop, all that stuff. But if, if the song or the tune, whatever, doesn't have a story, uh, I'm probably out. Yeah. That's usually how I decide for me. I don't know how it is for uh, everybody else, but that's how I usually determine who's on my playlist and stuff like that. I think about a good song should have a um, should have the three acts follow the three act rule, right? Yeah, there should be a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, you know, you, they, the chorus should be effectively the, the the chorus. The verses should be the building the tension, and then the chorus should be releasing it. Um, not necessarily every song, but uh, you know that's for me a, a nice catchy chorus, um, one that you can um, you end up humming for days. Like, like I'm a survivor, for instance. Um, just. Um, and I think we had a Raven song as well. I was I was humming that one for uh, for for days afterwards as well. In fact, I'm not going to start humming it now. I think because it's in my head again. <laughs> but um, but it's it's that you know it's uh, um, it, you know, it's all about building that that narrative, isn't it? Yeah, and, and making connections. Like a, a lot of people um, that I talk to personally, face to face, they'll think, yeah, sometimes it's a little weird, but. Like I said before, almost every song on my on my playlist, I identify with that song. It, it connects to my life uh, journey so far, whatever. And uh, and I've been like that. Like uh, I started uh, Dolly. Do you know Kitty Wells and um, uh, Wilf Carter? Oh hell yeah! Who does? Right, <laughs> right in Montana Slim. Okay, I was three and a half years old. And uh, it took me uh, up until my 50s to realize my parents were really actually kick-ass, awesome parents. At three and a half years old, um, they let me use their 45s, their LPs, and their portable little player. I was allowed to get up 5.30 in the morning if I wanted to and listen to music quietly. I couldn't write yet, but I knew my numbers, and I'd make little playlists. I've been doing this stuff like for 40 years, basically, is what I'm saying. But yeah, you know, all those greats, that's what I was um, brought up on. 
on the uh, on the Wednesday wash day. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a, a question uh, coming in off uh, social media from our friend Shalim here. It says, Dolly, what are your thoughts on artists putting out singles instead of full length albums? Do good songs get lost when a full length is released, or uh, is it all about with our particular culture about creating that next single? Uh, with me, I, I put out, I prefer to put out an album. I, I, that, that's, that's me. I'm old school. I prefer to put out an album. Uh, with people putting out singles, artists putting out singles, that's personal choice. If they want to do that, if they feel that's better for them, is to push that one song as far as they can push it. See, I, I'm totally different. I, I am different. I'm blonde. <laughs> I'm dumb blonde. Uh, I'm different. Uh, I won't push a song. I, I won't push just one single. I will push 20. So one of nice. them got to catch, right? So <laughs> it's it, it a personal choice for the artist. Not I'm different. I'm totally different. I put uh, out a song a day. So I put out uh, basically almost, I put out a single every day. Because, see, cool. when you get to be as old as I am, you know, I'm over the hill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, right. <laughs> so when, when, you get, when you get to be a certain age, I mean, if I had to start when I was 20 and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. But when you get to be a certain age, you, your, your second half of your life ain't going to be as, as long as the first half of your life. So you got to put them out now. you got to get it out. People put out a single and they just put out that one single and they'll wait. And he'll push that single, but that's personal choice. That is their personal choice. I that's an like awesome that. answer. You know what, Dolly? I think that way now, ever since I turned 50. <laughs> yeah. I, I look behind me and that road is long and it's got all kinds of uh, fun times, mm -hmm. bad times, hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ups and downs too. And twists and turns. And, and then I look in front of me and I'm looking like, but uh, I hope you put a, a listener discretion advice. But the road ahead of me isn't fucking 52 years now. No. <laughs> so I don't have a day to waste. Nobody does. Right? No. No. You got to live your life now. You got to do for you what you need to do for you. Mm -hmm. You've done for everyone else for 50 years now. For me, I'm going to have some fun. Watch out, Crown Royal. <laughs> oh, no, and Fireball. Fireball, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so Dolly, actually, I've got a kind of a question. This is a kind of a, I got a personal element in, in this question. It was a completely change of topic. Um, but your bio says that uh, uh, you received your first guitar when you were twelve, and that you taught yourself. Um, yeah, I did. I, I was probably a little older than uh, than twelve. I was you know, probably about um, fourteen or fifteen when I started. Um, but there was no internet. There was no YouTube, um, and yeah. certainly when. Uh, a working class guy. We didn't have money for a music lesson, so I figured it out. How how did you back in those days? Because we're I think we're about the same age. Um, you know, twenty seven. I'm fifty four. Twenty seven. Proud to say it. Tw twenty seven. I was going to say, but you, if you want to give it the the real one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how See, did you? This is why I love being in a band with Mark. I'm not the oldest person in the band, Maybe. and I I am I am not old by any stretch of the imagination. But I have been the oldest person in my band bands before. So thank you all for being born before me. <laughs> wow! But now he, but now I act a lot younger than he does. So I don't know. I kind of even this doubt. is very true. <laughs> so yeah, okay, so I, I will answer your question. Yes. Uh, no, I didn't have. Uh, internet or anything like that when my mom gave me this guitar when i was 12 years old she, i think she paid like 53 dollars for it it's a sears oh, model wow. yeah. it's a heavy bugger but it's sears uh it's a no-name guitar I've, I've written every song on it so wow. uh, what who taught me how to play guitar was tommy hunter yeah so, now you're gonna say <laughs> how did that happen uh Every Friday night, I waited for the Tommy. This is uh, God's honest truth. Every Friday night, I waited for Tommy Hunter to come on TV, right? When all the rest of my friends were going out and doing what they wanted to do, I was waiting for Tommy Hunter. So when Tommy Hunter came on, I went like this. I had six strokes on a piece of paper, right? And then I go along. And as soon as the camera would go on his fingers, 
I would put down, okay, forefinger here, ring finger oh. there. <laughs> you know, that's how I learned. That's how I learned. I didn't know the, the, the letters of the chords. Never had a clue. That was your YouTube. <laughs> that was my YouTube, was Tommy Hunter. And he, I stayed watching him every Friday night for months. I had my oh. mom drove off her head. And that's how I learned how to play guitar. Oh. And Tommy Hunter taught me that. My gosh, yeah, I yeah, um, I did. Tommy Hunter wasn't at my age at that time. wasn't my first vote, but it was what we watched, <laughs> and it was well, actually we really had two good. Stations. We right? only had two stations, five and thirteen. Right, uh, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think at that time we only had CBC and uh, possibly CTV or something. Yeah. BBC, uh, <laughs> and we were just too far from the border to catch American stations. So, but I, oh yeah, I remember Tommy Hunter. How did, I wanted to ask you before I forget, how did you like the Carol Baker concert? I have seen her twice oh, live. Oh First time when I was six and the second oh. time when I was 10. Oh, Phil, Phil, Phil. When, uh, when I walked up on that stage with my idol and just, when I went to her, I was crying. I was at first, I was in the front row and I was crying. Just look, I couldn't believe that this little little you know this dumb blonde from a little town in newfoundland uh, actually got to see her but then to actually get up on that stage and sing with her yeah my dream if i didn't do another thing in all my life i have lived the dream she is amazing yeah. what an entertainer yeah, oh, yeah. i remember her. See her in yeah. person and she's worth so worth going to see when I saw her on Facebook, I thought, gee, was she looked, well, obviously she looks older, but wow, I knew that was Carol Baker right away. Oh, like, yes. Oh, oh hey, yes. my parents, they dragged me. I don't know about everybody else here, but my parents used to take me to concerts. That's how hip they were. I, I never saw it that way at the time. But I've seen Wilf Carter with Hank Snow and um, the guy who sang El Paso, Marty Robbins. Marty Robbins. Uh, there was another guy that often came with Wolf Carter too, but I've seen him five times. Wow. Uh, age of four was the first time they took me. They spent money on me to go with them. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I got his autograph at every time. I, I lost those albums though, but I had his autographs because I was always, hey, buy me that record. And they would. And then I'd stand in line there as long as his break lasted to, to get Wolf Carter's autograph. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And all those other ones too, like my, I didn't spend that money uh, on my kids for a show. Like I went to my own shows. <laughs> no, you guys stay home, but yeah, my parents took me to Carol Baker. Like I said, twice. Oh, first time, amazing. yeah, first time was at the Modern Corn and Apple Festival in Mantoa. Wow. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Like I know of none of my friends. Our Morden friends. Uh, that's right. The, I know none of my friends from school that their parents would have paid a ticket for them. They would have sent, left them at home with the dog or with an older sibling. Yeah. <laughs> they must have liked you, Phil. <laughs> I guess so, or they didn't trust me alone. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. that's. I think that's second. That second thing. Yeah. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, actually, when I when I taught myself to play guitar, um, I was fortunate enough to have a whole load of uh, uh, sheet music around. Uh, my both my sisters um, had piano lessons, and I, I I started piano lessons, but got lost interest right away. Um, but yeah, it was just a matter of uh, playing my dad's or my parents' records. I wasn't just my dad's, um, and playing them and playing them slow. Okay, what's that note? And then trying to figure that out. I got the chords on the sheet music. I got a, quite a few songs that didn't even have the chords, and I'm trying to figure out what it was from music, some technical music books. It was, it, yeah. Now I got my son learning, and he just tunes into YouTube. Oh, that's how you do it. Like, I had to uh, do it the hard. We had to do it the hard way, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I I taught myself how to play bass, I obviously did have some some profession or some lessons that we we did get paid for, but I very much remember, very much like Mark did. I would sit down and I would play music off of uh of a cassette tape and i would try i would try and okay it's this 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 no it's not that one it's this 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 oh yeah there it is okay and then we go back so you listen to like the first half of a song until uh that part of the tape was worn out uh and, and then finally we get get through um so there and actually we got another question coming in from the from social media uh, shalim again 
And uh, if anybody is tuned into uh, Mark and I did a, a show on Wednesday where we kind of had uh, an open debate. We'll first put this out to Dolly and then uh, we can all chime in on our thoughts. What are your thoughts on streaming services? Uh, Shalim here says that he prefers to buy a CD. I happen to be in the same boat. Um, but uh, it's supposedly terrific exposure, but who wants to play for exposure? We all kind of want to get paid because we're not, no joke, sometimes starving artists. So Dolly, what are your thoughts on streaming services or this whole streaming environment? I don't do streaming. Um, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm not on CD Baby. I'm not on iTunes. Uh, I'm not on any of that. Unless some of the writers got my got the songs that they wrote that I recorded on there. Um, I don't do it. I, I just don't do it. I prefer to do an album. Actually, my new album is actually going to be on uh, vinyl. <laughs> right on. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, so is a is there I'm a, really going back there? Is there here, is, here in Denver? There are like fairly big stores that sell vinyl. So vinyl is making a resurgence. Oh yeah. Is there, a, is, is there a big market, market on that? Um, thriving. Yeah. Is there a big and market? And stereo for equipment that my parents used to buy at Radio Shack in the early '80s. Uh, it's it's back. The so, turntables with the diamond little thing there, and yeah, the balance at the end. <laughs> so how much is the? Yeah, how much of a market is there? Yeah, how much of a mm -hmm. market is there? Is it just kind of just just starting? On I know bands have always done it as a um, a novelty, uh, something for the merch table, something different fans can buy. I think um, it's fairly popular here. I like I've seen it quite a bit, um, and a lot of the younger people. Oh God. I sound so old. Um, I would still say younger people, and I'm I'm much younger than you. Phil. <laughs> but you're a bass player. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you better stay in, in Colorado there. Yeah, well, what is it you oh, play? I should take this moment what do you to play, remind Phil? everybody: summer is here. Please don't leave your bass players in a locked cold <laughs> vehicle. Okay, and if you see one, break the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, didn't, sorry, I couldn't resist. You didn't see that one coming, did you, Ryan? You didn't. No. Uh, it's okay. Today is my day off, so it's my day to misbehave. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How right. is this different than your other shows? I've tuned into your show. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> I behave now. I podcast now. <laughs> he, he's an anchor. And I was so looking forward to having this show with Dolly oh, done. Like, holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't want two of me, that's for sure. Well, I don't know. You keep <laughs> saying that you're spinny blonde or whatever. I, I say the blonde same thing blonde. about myself. I'm the same. I, I, when I was young, I was blonde, 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 blonde. Like, like you there. Like, uh, oh, no, really, I'm I'm dark blonde. I mean, well, I, I turned older, dark blonde I after. But... I was small, I was light blonde. And then as I got older, it went dark blonde. No, it's every right. bit of my color right now is right out of a bottle. <laughs> well, I shave mine because it's not blonde, it's not brown, it's just kind of gray and white. But uh, so, um, yeah, out of uh, five kids, I was the only blonde, blonde one. That gave me some tense moments when I was a kid. <laughs> when I noticed, like, oh my God, everybody else got dark hair. <laughs> blonde, Who, who's my daddy? <laughs> well, actually, Someone jump the fence. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> Well, when my brother was born, uh, the fourth of uh, there was there were four of us, um, and he was like nine years younger than me. So there's a big gap between the youngest and the uh, uh, and the rest of the three of us that were born within a few years of each other. Uh, he was blonde and blue eyes. No one else in the family has blonde and blue eyes. But dad's eyes are green. Mum's are brown. Both are dark. It feels and awkward. He, and he was blonde uh, with blue eyes. And the only person we could think of that was a blonde blue eyes was the milkman. <laughs> yeah. We had the, the guy that delivered the milk, the so yeah, we, we teased him. But as he got older, he just looks more and more like the rest of us. So we kind of believe that he probably <laughs> was. We are probably related to. Him. Hey, so it's summertime and, and people are going on vacations. I just saw this story just before coming on. Apparently, NASA is going to open up the uh, International Space Station to tourists. Yeah, I read about that the other who, day. On who would go? I would go. Well, oh, you got fifty. You have yeah. fifty-eight million dollars to no, get up there, Phil. No, but I was gonna mention my GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> Could I get there on my transit? Could I get there on my transit pass? 
<laughs> well, I mean, at least I you're not trying to go to the moon, which is apparently part of uh, Mars now, according to uh, President Trump. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't. I heard so, something there about was a, that. There was a, a tweet that went out, and uh, Trump was basically lambasting the, uh, NASA for spending a lot of money for, to send back to go, going back and researching and uh, to going back to the moon, right? And he's like, "Well, hey, you know what? We've." Uh, We've been there already. He says, you should really be fo- focusing on bigger things like Mars, which the moon is part of. <laughs> so, you know, there's only a difference of 39 million miles between the two. I mean, yeah, sure. I guess on an astronomical I, scale, that's... I'm going to remain neutral. <laughs> you know, he is my president. <laughs> You sure so, about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> according that's to, another the, show altogether. Back to the Dolly. Back to Dolly. <laughs> that I want to have my <laughs> citizenship. If you're going to stay on that. <laughs> I know I'm, Dolly, I'm, no I'm, way. Yeah. If you're going to no. stay on that, I think the world of Mr. <laughs> President Trump. Well, I know you do, yes. That's yes, why I'm staying neutral. I just. I actually wrote a song two years ago for his birthday. So. Oh, what was that one called? Yeah. Cool. Uh, what was that's the name? Cool. What's the name of that one? Happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> I, well, I, I, might have, I, could have, I could have looked yeah. in your catalog and could have guessed, I suspect. Okay. <laughs> uh, but as it, like Phil said, I'm an artist. I'm a, uh, an artist, not a politician. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm let's, not yeah, a, yeah, let's and, bring it back to that. That's no. a totally different. So we, actually, totally we, actually different we, do have a, we do have a rule, um, no politics. And it's cool. I know I've said this before, but I also am an artist, and I use your, your, music, your art yeah. And oftentimes, you know, when I do my show, uh, the mood, if somebody were to know me, that the mood is there. I yeah. weave stuff, I use Dolly's music, it's all in the mind, uh, whatever I, you know, you put them all together, and um, there you go, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got- That's fun. I love what I do. If, if now, if we could just push the whole station, HGB Canada, and get some sponsors going for all of us, that'll be cool too. Yeah, but actually, we do have a rule on the show. We kind of uh, straight there: uh, no politics, no religion, unless it directly uh, intersects with the yeah, music that sorry, we're talking that about. Was my fault. Yep. So Ryan, see, naughty. he's the bass player. See, that's again. what happens when you <laughs> when you lock the bla- yep. bass player. Well, you're right. I was going to say, the were you left? I was going to say, were you left in the vehicle? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ryan. <laughs> Probably many <laughs> times, many times. We get another person joining us live on our our uh, feed. And, um, Ruben, Aaron Ruben, a good friend of mine. Hey, buddy, great to have you join us here. Uh, we also have Catherine Mc. Uh, oh, I can't say it. I'm sorry, Catherine. I'm sorry, my, and this is betraying my Scottish heritage too. McGoffrey, that should probably be it. Thank you for joining us here. And I'm currently in penance for taking uh, stepping outside the band or the, <laughs> the, the rules of the show. I <laughs> just do my, my call outs here. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dolly, uh, you have a song you'd like to do live. Ooh. Would you be up for doing that now? Oh, heck yeah. Carol, yeah. Uh, actually, Carl is going to join me on Back Up the Carol for this one. So. Hello, Carl. Oh, did we? Yes, Carla. Yeah, come in here, Carl. Yeah. Oh, I'm on my phone, so okay, um, see if you can get us. Oh, yeah. Now, is is this this is the original guitar, right? This is the one that you you sort of cut your teeth on to to play with that you're uh, gonna play perform yeah, with us this now. Yeah, this is this is the one my mom gave me. Here's Carla. Hey, so, Carla. Hey. Hey, hey. hey Carla. <laughs> so we're actually gonna give this a try. So we I'm on my practice. phone, so we only get a little camera. <laughs> <laughs> So, Just lean in. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song I co-wrote with uh, an amazing writer, John Cole, out of Florida. And we've co-written a few songs, but this is one that I haven't got recorded yet, but will be within the next two weeks. So it's called I Never Said I Was an Angel. I never said I was an angel Cause I don't said I was an angel and 
that old claim to be and no my world is so shattered by what you've done to me I'll get along and soon forget wipe you from my memory I never said I Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody watching online, there that was the lovely and talented uh, Dolly Dunn with Carla Bonnell uh, backing up. Thank you, ladies. That was a treat. That was a real treat. High praise coming from the <laughs> non-loving, uh, non-country loving punk metalhead over in in the River City. So, yeah. well done, guys. That was I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you. Oh, that was good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. That was lovely. Um, Phil, say something. Yeah, you're muted again. Said, hey, 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 there we Carla. go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that's my boss over there. <laughs> <laughs> she she run things at uh, HGB Canada Radio, and um, she took a few days there and uh, trusted me not to run the station into the ground. And I I think I did okay. <laughs> you did amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, actually. So, uh, everybody watching, I've got to um, just uh, share some contact information for uh, Dolly. For those of you who want to uh, follow up with uh, with her work, uh, so um, www.dollydunn.com. You can catch her on Facebook, Dolly Dunn too, um, and uh, True North Recordings Canada um, as well. Um, check out that Facebook page, and yeah, if you want to email Dolly, Dolly Dunn one at Gmail. And uh, the thing I was most impressed with uh, was that Dolly has a fan club. Um, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> so that was well, actually. Hell yeah, Dolly has a fan club. And I they know that. and they beat. It looks and it looks like by the name. It actually. Have y'all not seen her videos? Yeah, but actually beats her. Thousands they, of views. Thousands of views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like it looks like they actually beat uh, you to uh, Facebook because they actually stole your name, and you have to be Dolly Dunn too, even though you're the first. So anyhow, so that's that's, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Um, we gotta get back. there we go. <laughs> we get back again. Yeah, that was uh, that was great. So, uh, so um, what was the um, the motivation between writing that on? Was there a, a there must be a, um, an underlying story? And there is, but I can't <laughs> say. <laughs> oh, dish, dish, dish! Come on, <laughs> nobody's watching. Is this between us? Well, okay, I'll, I'll let's see. Um, someone said to me one time in a not so nice voice you think you're an angel don't you you think you're wearing a halo every day <laughs> no i don't 
So that's where the song came from. I never said I was an angel. (laughs) (laughs) And how dare they say that? How dare. Damn it. (laughs) All right. So uh, we actually have a comment uh, from Catherine uh, McGaffrey. I'm sorry, Catherine, if I I mispronounce your your name. Uh, Dolly, she's a promoter actually from... uh, from Starbane Radio Station, uh, she she's based out of uh, the she's Irish. She's based out of the UK. She says she wants you to send her music so she can promote you. So God way to go, you. Dolly. Uh, so, so Catherine, uh, in here we post it up, and maybe Mark can uh, can throw up the uh, the um, contact information again, either at the end of the show or even right now. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and contact uh, Dolly. Right there, it's up on the screen. Should be coming up right away. Mm-hmm. Um, you can contact her there. Get in contact with her. So, Dolly, I think you're discounting yourself when you say dumb blonde because you just made yourself another contact. <laughs> I, uh, well, I yours, I actually, is, well, yours I actually, is the greater I, kung fu here. Your way to be. That's I awesome. Actually I put out a song you. a couple of weeks ago about it's called Dumb Blonde. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually says this dumb blonde ain't nobody's fool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hot damn that's a great that's a great title way to go <laughs> actually well, well we're talking about contact information just anyone is interested as well which hopefully you are uh, there's just the show info um, check out theinvisibleman.ca we're on Facebook as it's all in the mind um, I don't think we said we didn't do our traditional uh, opening as Ryan's um, in, uh, at, at in a different location usually we do the uh, uh, and we are it's all in the mind so that's who we are uh duo um a duo they're a band duo and we uh, will we'll bring in a percussionist or a, a drummer when we need one um and of course you can reach phil on the colorado phil show page he's um that's a daily show during the week um phil t- uh, how do people listen to you oh hey i got a plug ready to go i was just uh, looking at it <laughs> um let's see now the colorado phil show is done live from denver colorado Mondays through Fridays, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time here in Colorado, uh, 2 to 6 p.m. Central Time in Manitoba, and 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time over there where Carla and Dolly are. And it's broadcast live, my friends, live on HGB Canada Radio. And I would ask you to check out HGB Canada Radio. 24 7 because there's an excellent independent music uh, mix there and there are great shows like i'll throw out a plug here uh dang unapologetically brie and the gossiping heifers we should get them on the show too um <laughs> let's see and that's it i think www.hgbroadcasting.com is where you catch the show that's great and if uh, uh, no. and for uh, any for the archive of all the uh, the invisible man shows can be found on youtube uh, easiest it, way to get yeah. there Ooh. is is the invisible man dossier slash youtube and that'll redirect to youtube um phil uh, i forgot to mention get the anchor app uh, a-n-c-h-o-r because uh, starting monday i'm gonna actually make it like season one episode one of podcasts and it's a uh, four hourly uh, podcast per day is this going to be um uh uh, are you recording your live show or is this a separate? That's different... my live show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you can catch that because that I think uh, for me was uh, it was when you were doing this on YouTube. You do a half an hour before, and I look forward to that. Mm-hmm. But now, um, I guess you have, it's a lot of work to do. The that. opener is in the uh, hour oh. one podcast. Okay. okay. So that's uh, yeah. So that's good. So people can follow that because sometimes I can't. Well, I I can't watch because I'm at work for much of the time, right? Anyhow, so if you want to tweet me and Phil, um, me at. Um, at MD Stallard and uh, Colorado Phil One, uh, we do reply to tweets. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm a Twitter. <laughs> Tweet. There we go. That, that's all the business. Oh, actually, one more more business. If you visit the www.theinvisibleman.ca, follow the link uh, to, and you can find uh, a nice mug or a t-shirt to, to support the show. Um, here we go. So, uh, that's it. So that was my my, my merch uh, plug. That was our little plug there for for merch. <laughs> So <laughs> there we go. Uh, do, do hey, any- hey, wait! Oh. Then if you guys are plugging merch, I'm plugging merch too. Um, <laughs> there's a store. Uh, is Carla still there? Yeah. Well, come on on. <laughs> so Carla, how's he doing? He he promoted that's everything pretty good, I think. Right. What's that? He promoted everything pretty good, right? 
Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> so you can pay him two cents instead of one cent now. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a bigger commission for it. <laughs> there you go. Is that is that per hour or per show? <laughs> so we depends on the quality of the nice show. T-shirts. We did. Well, we made some nice T-shirts for Phil. Um, They're real funky. Yeah. They look like a like you know from the hippie time and. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we could get them on the website, hgbroadcasting.com. There's a store on there. I think towards the bottom, you'll be able to see it there. And just click on there, and they'll just send it right to you. Just tell them what size you want. Yeah, and it, bam, you've got your product. Easy as that. Wear us and I think by we, your heart. Uh, and we've got a link. Actually, if you go on all the YouTube uh, po- uh, videos that we've posted with Phil, there is a link to that merch link as well for Phil's merch, as well as the Invisible Man show as well. Right on. Yeah, uh, you guys are welcome to put your stuff up there too if you like. Yeah, hey, perfect. Mm-hmm. perfect. We'll definitely take up yeah. on that. Well, we um, don't discriminate against bass players. I was just, <laughs> well, yeah. I was just laughing. That's all. You Not know, at Ryan. And what's really okay, funny? I'm gonna get out of here, right. folks, so that Dolly can come back in. Indeed. Right right on. On. See you later, see you, Carla. Bye. Bye. Yeah, hey. okay. there's the lady of the hour so, again so how do people <laughs> buy your your albums and uh and your material there's only one place that you can actually buy my albums now and that's uh dollydone.com okay. uh i will be putting it into stores this summer so okay. I, when i get them into the the record stores i will then post where they are and they can buy them but right now it's just through uh dollydone.com Okay, right on. that sounds good. Uh, nice and simple, and unlike our links, there are thousands of them, and that's really nice and simple. Perfect. <laughs> um, so I think we're probably uh, coming to the end of the show. Is there anything you'd like to add or anything you'd like, you'd like to plug, uh, Dolly? Yes, I want to tell my fans that I love them very yeah. much. Perfect. That means that means you, that means you love us as well. That's what? great. Yes. Okay. I hear Carla whispering in the background. Yeah, she is. She said, "Tell them where you're playing. Tell them where you're." Yeah, playing. tell them. Yeah, for Isn't sure. It? Oh, yeah, I'm doing a, a big festival in Newfoundland, uh, the Brimstone Hid Festival on Fogo Island. It's, uh, it's a little island where my mom was born and raised. And uh, and I'm so proud to be actually be a part and be on the main stage of that festival come August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Right. Huh? Is there dwarf tossing there? Is that why Carla told you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and if you want to know what that's about, uh, fill you in, check out Dolly. check out our last show with uh, uh with Colin, like two shows ago. Um, yeah, actually, Dolly, if you want to send me the information on that, uh, we've got a, a calendar on the it's um, on the in what was going wrong there the Invisible Man show page. Uh, we've got a calendar with some events uh, that our guests um, are, are doing. So put, give it to us; we'll put it up there, and then um, yeah, there'll be our other uh, acting. We've got some uh, a couple of Carla shows are on there as well. Um, so I think if anyone's got anything else to say, we are going to say no, goodbye. I think this was good. I, yeah. I, I want to say thank you to Dolly for agreeing to do this. And uh, I think it was fun. Uh, you know. Phil, you know I loved you. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Love you too. That's great. And, uh, and Dolly, if you just want to hang around, we'll chat after the show. So thanks, uh, thanks very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, this has been the Invisible Man show uh, with our very, very special guest, uh, Dolly Dunn. And Share our, the video when you watch and it. And a very oh, I should have welcome said that at the beginning. And it was, and it was a welcome uh, cameo uh, from uh, Carla. So it's great to see you, see you both. So um, thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Right on. Bye. Oh, the invisible man.